Now, continuing our series of films where we ask the sons and daughters of famous parents to tell us what it was like growing up with them, tonight we find out about the lady who created Uncle Bulgaria, Tobamori, Orinoco and Madame Chalet. Any idea, Neil, what we're on about? <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be the Wombles. Got yeah. to be the Wombles. Love the Wombles. That's right. Yeah. So it's over to Elizabeth Beresford's son, Marcus. <laughs> My mother, Elizabeth Beresford, had her eureka moment on Wimbledon Common in the late 60s. It was Boxing Day, and we were taken up there because we'd been making far too much noise for our grandparents. And my sister, Kate, ran up to Mum and said, isn't it lovely being on Wimbledon Common? And Mum looked at her and said, that's it, the Wombles of Wimbledon. Underground, overground, wombling free, the Wombles of Wimbledon Common are But this is where she wrote many of her Wombles books. We started coming to Albany for our summer holidays in the 1960s when I was six, and we came here every year. And Mum loved it so much, just the sheer beauty of it all, that she and Dad ended up living here, and she used to swim every day, every summer, until her health fell. She just loved it so much. I remember the move very clearly, a very Womble-like plane, and my dad, the tennis commentator, Max Robertson, came over a bit later. He is the one who had always wanted to live here, but Mum didn't. She was afraid of being cut off, but funnily enough, he ended up hating the place, and she adored every bit of it, and later in life they divorced. Island life really suited her. It's a very small community. It's only three miles long and one mile wide, and there are fewer than 2,000 people, so she knew everybody. This is our house. It's very quiet here in Alderney, and the door will almost certainly still be unlocked, because nothing is ever locked here. And this is my mother's writing room, the parlour, where she wrote all her books. And this is the typewriter she wrote them on, including the Wombles, and she used to call it her triper. And here we have the rest of my family. My grandfather, Great Uncle Bargari, my grandmother, Madame Cholet, and this, I'm afraid to say, Orinoco was based on me, and he is the fattest, great, greediest and laziest of the Wombles, which my wife reckons is pretty accurate. Fame followed the Wombles. There was lots of publicity as the TV series came out, and the film, and the pop songs, of course. And we were even involved in one stunt in the film with them. She never really missed England at all, and certainly never doubted she'd made the right move. I hope that working here, perhaps I shall be able to produce a few more Womble books, and we mustn't take it all too seriously, which eventually will make people laugh. And that's what I want to do, It's just literally to go on making people laugh. The Wombles hardly changed Mum at all. Once she got here to Alderney, to be honest, she just got wrapped up in island life, loved it all, and uh, much to my amusement, she actually became the station mistress. It is the most eccentric of railway lines. There's two coaches in the northern line just operating on the island, but trains are always part of the life that Mum and I shared together, and as a child, she used to take me to her office at the Central Office of Information, just outside Waterloo, where she was a journalist. And I used to watch these massive steam engines going in and out to Bournemouth and Exeter and places. It was very exciting, and I became an enthusiast. Even before the Wombles, she'd had quite a lot of success and wrote a TV series called Danger on the Old Pull and Push. It was about an old branch line in Kent that was going to close. And there was a book about it that came out a year later. And amazingly, she dedicated it, when I was age five, to Marcus the Boy on the Train, which was amazingly prescient. And it's a hell of a thing to have as a souvenir. I had absolutely no idea at the time that's exactly what I'd do, run steam trains around Britain. The boy on the train, the boy on his own trains, and Mum really loved that. Mum was an ardent royalist, and she was so excited when she was appointed an MBE, and we went with her to get it at Buckingham Palace, and here it is. And you could see when she and the Queen were chatting, they were very, very animated, and quite clearly the Queen knew a lot about the Wombles, and Mum said afterwards she was clearly a Wombles fan, asking questions about Bunga and Great Uncle Bulgaria. Everyone else seemed to get just a few seconds perfunctory chat, and Mum was so chuffed that it was obviously something the Queen loved. Ultimately, Mum wanted to make people laugh, and I think she did make people laugh. She's still making people laugh, and she'll go on making people laugh. Well, thanks to Elizabeth's son, the greedy, the lazy, as we found out, Marcus, <laughs> for making that film for us.